Hello, my name is Jesse Walter and welcome to the Basics of UDK tutorial. So what is UDK? UDK is Unreal Development Kit. The free edition of Unreal Engine 3, which has been used to make some of the top 3D games in the industry. Such examples would be Gears of War and Infinity Blade and of course the well-known Unreal Tournament 3. So before we get started, you should download the Unreal Development Kit from the Unreal website, which is located at www.unrealengine.com slash en slash udk slash downloads. It's important to know the system requirements if you plan on using Unreal Development Kit. The minimum system requirements are Windows XP Service Pack 3 32-bit only, Windows Vista, or Windows 7. 2 GHz processor, 2 GB of RAM, SM3 compatible video card, 3 GB free of hard drive space, and that's just the minimum. The recommended is Windows 7 64-bit, 2 plus gigahertz multi-core processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, NVIDIA 8000 series or higher graphics card, and plenty of hard drive space. Also, it is important to know the official documentation location for Unreal Development Kit, and that is located at www.unrealengine.com slash udk slash documentation. If there's something I don't cover in any of my tutorials, you will certainly be able to find your answers at that particular address. It is also important to know that uh, you can in fact install multiple versions of UDK. Just be sure to double check your shortcut on the desktop that uh, you're using the version you want to use. So in this first tutorial, um, going over the basics of UDK, we're going to cover the uh, toolbars up top and on the side as well as the uh, initial screens that load when you install and start UDK for the first time. So the first screen that you'll be presented with is the welcome to UDK screen, this uh, dialog box here. And you can always uncheck that to uh, keep it from starting up. Uh, I like to have it up because I never know when I'm going to really need it or use it. On this welcome screen you'll have um, quick access to helpful links related to Unreal Development Kit. I'm going to close that window and then I'm going to drag this content browser dialog uh, into view. The content browser provides you a visual organization of your assets per project. You will use this dialog to import and export assets such as your 3D models, textures, and animations. You will also be able to drag assets like static meshes or 3D models from the content browser into your work area in the engine. You may also drag materials from the content browser onto your static meshes. That we'll get into later. I'm going to expand this window. You can sort through and load uh, any of the pre-built in uh, assets and maps for UDK through this hierarchy system here, through these packages, and when you create a package you'll access and save it through here. One of the nice key features about the content browser is that we can sort through sort through our assets um, just by simply clicking on these checkboxes here. And when we import assets, we will be able to categorize what that asset is as we import it. But this is just a quick overview. So we'll get into that later. So for now, I'm just going to close this window. And this is the main editing window. This is the engine window where you will build your level and or game. To navigate in this window, you need to use the WASD or left, right, up, down arrow keys. 
the right mouse button rotates the camera as we see here the left mouse button moves the camera on its axis both mouse buttons allow you to move up and down when you press them at the same time and then when I use the W key it moves the camera forward and S moves it backwards A moves it left and D moves it right now UDK has a lot of icons on its toolbars and if you're not familiar with programs such as UDK it can be a little bit overwhelming but it's relatively easy once you get the hang of it and so what we're going to do is just cover over the basics and most common used tools on the toolbar in this particular case we're going to talk about the side toolbar first there are eight modes uh, or mode sections on the side toolbar UDK loads in with the camera mode by default which is this mode right here we also have the geometry mode the terrain mode the texture alignment mode the mesh painting mode the static mesh mode the landscaping mode and the foliage mode Below, <clears throat> excuse me below the modes are the brushes and these are the BSP brushes uh, and these basically give us our primitives in which we can um, white box out our level or create a level using just the BSP brushes what is the BSP brush or what is the brush this is the brush right here as you can see it is in the shape of a cube that is the default brush if we click on the cone it'll change that brush to a cone we also have the curved staircase and let me get a better better view of this curved staircase so we can see it there we go um, cylinder linear staircase a sheet or plane a spiral staircase a sphere and cards so below the brushes we have the CSG also known as constructive solid geometry brushes there are four default brushes excuse me there are four brushes in the CSG brush selection of the side toolbar these brushes allow for the world builder to cut or fill BSP geometry for example creating a doorway in a wall made from a BSP brush can be done by placing the BSP brush in the location of the door and then clicking the subtract CSG button on the side toolbar the CSG brushes included are additive subtractive intersecting and de intersecting so for example if I change this to a cylinder and then I wanted to add this BSP geometry in I would click on the add right here and that would then create that geometry I'm going to jump ahead here we're going to use another tool here it's going to rescale this brush and what I'm going to show you is to add the subtractive and that's going to punch a hole right into the center here so I've changed my brush and now I'm going to subtract it and there's our hole below the CSG we have volumes this is the add special brush but this is the add volume and if we click on that that gives us an option so whatever volume we want to create whether it's uh, air or excuse me water or lava or even just a blocking volume or even a trigger volume uh, this creates a zone in which it activates something when the player or another object collides into that area and that's going to be based on the brush that you create we can also play around with gravity and have certain zones of your level to be affected with gravity a little differently uh, and we can 
locate those zones with our brushes, our unique brush. And let's say you lose your brush and you can't find it and you've clicked off of it and you need to find it. So then if you click on this go to button here, go to builder brush, it'll take us to our BSP building brush. Also, if we use our content browser and we switch over to the tab, um, I believe it is seen, and we're going to select one of the brushes here. Okay, so there's that brush. Let's go to this one. So if we select that brush or whatever object that we want to find in our scene, we can easily click on this. Op, uh, on this particular actor and then click on the go to actor button and that will take us right to that particular actor we're looking for or that object. So now we're going to talk about the um, top toolbar up here. There are five key buttons on the top toolbar which uh, are used to control the scale of objects in the scene. By default the brush is in the transform gizmo move axis mode uh, which is this button right here um, this is let's pull out our builder brush over here so we can play with that a little easier all right so these arrows represent the um, move axis so we can grab an axis we can grab these handles here and move it on either axis the next is rotation, so if we click on that, um, we get different handles on the transform, so we can rotate that brush on any of those axes. And you can also control the rotation degrees uh, down here, at the bottom here. So if we were to change this, we would be able to move strictly on the 90 degree for every every turn that it moves. I'm going to change this back to 2.81. Much smoother. Next we have the scale mode uh, and this scales the entire object so if I grab a handle, everything scales uniformly. You've probably seen me doing this earlier. But then if I click on this next button next to it, this is the non-uniform scale mode. Here I can really manipulate the, um, the scale of the brush with a much greater control. So if I want to pop that back into default mode, I can just um, click on the cube here and then it'll bring us right back to the initial cube state. Next we want to talk about the three key buttons used to switch between either the content browser, the Kismet editor, or the Unreal Matinee editor. So they are right here. This is the content browser. If we click on that icon, it brings up our content browser, which we talked about earlier. If I click on the K here, that opens up the Unreal Kismet. This is your high-level programming or high-level scripting. Uh, that is used in conjunction with the matinee. So uh, if I click on the matinee, I, don't, I think it's going to give us an error. Yeah, because we have not created anything in Kismet here yet to activate something in matinee, but that is uh, the location of those buttons. And finally we need to talk about um, testing and playing your scene. So um, before you can really play your scene, or before you should play your scene, you should build your geometry. And what do we mean by that? Well, when you drop objects in here, and are, or in this case created this BSP, see how we've got these little jagged lines? Well the lighting has not um, been built for this scene yet. So we're seeing these cracks because the lighting doesn't quite know how to figure out that we've actually put something there. I mean it's kind of given us uh, an assemblance of something but the, it should really be rebuilt. And what that's going to do and when you play it it also may or may not show your geometry that you added. Uh, it may not have the collisions on your geometry. So we, we really want to be able to build our geometry uh, and really build the whole scene. 
So build the entire scene. It's this button here, build all. But let's say you just added a piece of geometry and you just wanted to test real quick. As your scene gets bigger, it's going to take longer and longer to build. Uh, so in that case, you may want to section off what pieces you want to build, um, whether it's the geometry, uh, the lighting, or the path nodes. Uh, each of these can be built separately. But in this case, we're just going to build all. So if I click on that, it's going to build. And this may take a minute. So I'm going to pause and come right back when it's done. Okay, our scene has been built. Um, I paused because sometimes it takes a while for the lighting to build. Um, right now it's really only a matter of a few seconds depending on the, the uh, workstation that you're using. But um, the light maps take a long time. So these um, the processing the light maps and, and the, the collecting of the photons, all this takes time to build. That's why I paused it. So I'm going to close. This is our swarm agent um, this gives you this usually spawns down at the bottom of your screen and you can open that up to watch the the level build and how much time it you know you can estimate that it'll take and close that you might get a little warning here this is nothing to be concerned about at this point in time uh, but now we see our shadow is fully baked in so now we have two places we can click for playing our scene. We can play the level in a separate window here, or we can play it in the viewport. Now this is going to give us two different um, fields when we play. If we play in a separate window, it's going to automatically start us down here where the, uh, where the pawn start location is uh, by default. And I will demo that now. As we can see, we started at the bottom. Now we can kind of use our WASD keys to walk around and use our mouse to kind of turn the camera as we walk. Hit escape to get out of that window. Now, let's say we wanted to test uh, the view from up here. We can move our camera to this location and if we play from our viewport, which is this location, this is what the viewport is, is what we're viewing here. Um, we click on that, it'll drop us right at the top where that camera is. Wherever the camera's at is where it's going to play from viewport. And if we hit escape, that'll end. Um, some miscellaneous buttons to to be aware of. Um, we can kind of change what we view um, in the in the level or in our viewport through these buttons here. Uh, if we want the lit mode versus unlit mode, uh, lighting only, um, light complexity. Uh, this is kind of some advanced stuff that uh, we probably won't get into uh, anytime soon. Uh, wireframe mode, brush mode, uh, let's go back to lit mode. And then this uh, this is a very key button to be aware of. This changes the speed in which our uh, camera travels when we hit the WASD keys. So this is the current speed. If I hit click on this and raise that bar, see if we click it again, we'll raise it more and more. Now we see how fast that camera moves. It moves pretty darn fast. So uh, you can just set that to whatever you feel comfortable with. So we've kind of learned some basics here and I'm going to end this tutorial at this point in time. I thank you for listening. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and have a great day.